Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Tuesday means it's Type 2 or Standard Tuesday, and I'm super excited because our Standard format is suddenly super wide open with Etherworks Marvel biting the dust, getting banned. Things are pretty crazy in Standard right now, and a lot of things are possible. So today, we're going to be checking out Monumental White, a deck that recently took Twistling to a 5-0 finish in a competitive league on Magic Online. So congrats to Twistling on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break down Monumental White for Standard, if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Monumental White is named for Oketra's Monument, a 3-mana legendary artifact that is basically mono white ramp. It makes all of our white creatures, and we have 28 white creatures in our deck, one last to cast, so we can accelerate a bunch of creatures onto the battlefield super quickly. Also gives us a 1-1 white warrior token with vigilance whenever we cast a creature. So not only does it help us cast our creatures by making them cheaper, they all come with a kicker essentially of an extra 1-1 white token, which makes our cards really powerful. The downside is it's legendary, so we can't really play two of them, but the upside is we can take over the game really quickly. So the biggest payoffs for Oketra's Monument are Handwear Militia Captain in Bygone bishop so hand we're militia captain only a 2-2 two, two for two but if we have four or more creatures we get to flip it around and its power toughness is equal to the number of creatures we control which means we're often going to have a 5-5 five, five, a 10-10 for just two mana which is super big and it also makes a 1-1 one, one on each of our turns so it keeps growing itself and growing our army bygone bishop on the other hand takes advantage of the fact that our 28 creatures are all super cheap thanks to a Ketris monument so that means instead of spending two mana cast handwear militia captain we can cast it for one mana we get a clue token from our bygone bishop and we can use our leftover mana to crack the clue to draw more creatures that will again be cheaper with Oketra's monument and just spiral things out of control with this steady stream of card advantage and cheap mana costs on all of our stuff. As far as the rest of the deck we got a couple one drops. Sacred Cat, Thraben Inspector also gives us a clue to keep us churning through our deck. In the two drop slot Glory Bound Initiate, no always watching here just beating down. We can get in for three if our opponent doesn't have blockers and then if they do have blockers we can always exert gain a bit of life, get in for four. As a 4-4 four, four for two, it's really strong. And then Selfless Spirit saves all of our creatures from Radiant Flames and Fumigates and Wraths like that, while also providing a clock in the air. Then we have a couple of removal-ish creatures. Fairgrounds Warden, exile something when it enters the battlefield until it leaves the battlefield. So it isn't really permanent removal, because sooner or later, our opponent's going to find a Harness Lightning or something to kill it, a Fatal Push with Revolt, whatever. But it can be very powerful as a tempo play. So we play a Sacred Cat on turn 1, a Glory Bound Initiate on turn 2, opponent plays the blocker, we Fairgrounds Warden, get the blocker out of the way that clears a way to get in a big attack, deal a bunch of damage, and even if our opponent finds a way to kill the Fairgrounds Warden eventually, it's still kind of done its job. And then Archangel Avacyn is one of the cards that has probably improved most thanks to the banning of Aetherworks Marvel. Archangel Avacyn is super powerful. At various times it's been maybe the best card in Standard, or one of the best cards in Standard, but in a world where Ulamar is coming down on turn 4. Playing Archangel Avacyn on turn 5 just isn't very exciting, but now it comes down, saves our team from a wrath, or messes up combat for our opponent, for eyes of fast clock in the air, and can even flip around and sweep away a board full of zombies or something. And then in the 5 drop slot we get Angel of Invention and Regal Caracal. A little bit weird, but Angel of Invention pumps up our entire team. Regal Caracal <laughs> works well with our Sacred Cat. Also kind of makes an army. It can represent a lot of power and toughness because it's not only making those two cats but also pumping them so it can be a lot of value out of the five mana slot one of the sweetest cards in the deck is a singleton dust to dawn so we don't really have anything well i guess avacyn but other than avacyn we don't really have anything that's going to die to dusk and then we have a ton of things our selfless spirits our 
Angel of Inventions. All of our one drops, a lot of our creatures are going to come back to our hand once we cast Dawn. So in the late game, after we've been trading off creatures, fighting three removal, it's going to be like draw three, four, five, six creatures out of our graveyard. And then we're going to be able to cast them really cheaply, really quickly, because we have a Ketra's Monument making them cheaper. The rest of the main deck, a single Gideon of the Trials, eh, I mean, it's kind of a removal spell because we can plus it on something. No real specific synergy, though. We got a couple of Stasis Snares to get rid of stuff and a declaration in stone for the early game as far as the mana base 70 planes the full four westville abbeys which takes advantage of the fact that we're making all these tokens with a ketra's monument we can flip around into an ormondal really easily and a couple of guy reach sanitariums to churn through our deck in the sideboard we have a bunch more removal Declaration Stone cast out, Fragmentize for artifacts and enchantments, some more creaturey removal, and another Fairgrounds Warden, a couple of Angel of Sanctions. Then we have a Fumigate and another Dust Dawn. Fumigate's great at sweeping away the board against aggro decks, and then Dust Dawn is not only a sweeper, but also just so much card advantage, so I could imagine bringing it in against controlling decks as well, just for the Dawn effect, even if we're not really killing much with the Dusk effect. And then Anointer Priest helps us against aggro decks, gaining as a little bit of life. We don't have a ton of embalmed creatures, but remember, Oketra's Monument is making a token every time we cast it, so we can actually gain a reasonable amount of life with Anointer Priest. And then Thalia Heretic Cathar keeps our opponent from playing their blockers untapped so we can get in another big swing. And then Gideon gives us another resilient threat for control decks. And that is Monumental White for Standard. And that's our instant deck tech for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.